Honorable Speaker, sir, at a time when this uh, August Assembly uh, is debating uh, the functioning of two important ministries, uh, the Ministry of Industries and the Ministry of Trade, I believe it's uh, imperative and vital um, that we focus on the national financial issues um, which have a direct bearing on industrial policy and also trade policy of our country. If I may, Honorable Speaker, uh, with your permission, uh, revert back uh, to uh, a whole economic expose that was presented to this uh, August Assembly by the State Finance Minister a few days ago um, as a response to a 27-2 question which I posed um, regarding the downgrading um, of the Fitch indicators uh, as usual with his all bullishness uh, the State Minister of Finance uh, went on a whole uh, essay on financial and economic policy of our country. Uh, I was restricted in replying him because of the standing orders, so I take this opportunity when uh, the Ministry of Industries and Ministry of Trade are being discussed. Um, I want to use this time to um, articulate the present situation of our economy. Now, in all bullishness, the finance uh, minister, the, the state minister, uh, expressed a series of opinions. And uh, some have gone on to uh, provide him with uh, accolades stating that uh, he had provided all of us uh, with a lesson in uh, finance. Now, let me bring to the notice of this August Assembly, the present administration have failed in their duty to present to the country the second and third quarter figures for the economic growth rates. We all know that the Census and Statistics Department announced that in the first quarter we had negative growth, minus 1.6% growth. It is incumbent upon the Statistics Department and the government, the present administration, to put out these economic growth figures 75 days from the conclusion of that particular quarter. But this government and administration has woefully failed in providing these figures to the country as a whole, to this August Assembly, the Parliament. And since the government has engaged in hiding these statistics, a negative impression has been created in the financial markets which does not bode well for our country's economy. Various international institutions which have a preeminent role in managing the world economy have expressed their surprise at this negligence, negligent conduct of the present administration. This government cannot express to our country, nor to the international community, the second and third quarter growth rates. What are you all hiding? Why are you all running away from exhibiting these statistics? The second issue that I have, uh, Honorable Speaker, is that this government, through the 2021 budget speech, they have expounded the fact 
that state income, government income, is going to achieve a humongous rise from the present state of 9% of GNP to 14%. I would like to ask the finance minister, the state minister, when have we in our history achieved such a huge jump in state income within the course of 12 months? This government is predicting that state income will rise from 9 to 14 percent of GNP. This is preposterous. This is absolute humbug. This is an attempt to deceive both the parliament and the people of our country. Honorable Speaker, the so-called economic maestro of the present administration, the State Minister of Finance, he talks about the fact that the present administration is embarking on a revolutionary path-breaking economic policy which no other government has implemented ever in our economic and political history. Well, in a sense I agree with him because at the end of last year, this government took the most ludicrous decision of cutting taxes to benefit the rich, the super rich in our country, thereby ensuring that up to 600 to 800 billion rupees of government revenue were given as handouts to the well-off in our society, to the rich in our society. What was the theory behind it? Through those tax cuts, the entrepreneurial class of our country, the super rich, would invest those savings that they would receive through those tax cuts to ensure that speedy economic activities take place within our domestic economy and thereby propel economic growth in our country. So if that was the theory of the government, it's no different to the neoliberal economic theory of trickle-down economics. Through these tax cuts, this government has crowned themselves as the super neoliberalists in the whole world. 600 to 800 billion in tax cuts to the super rich. And he is trying to claim that he is the uh, economic guru of this present administration. Mr. Speaker, this government has embarked on a policy, as I see it, of some medieval autarky, putting import restrictions, having a process whereby we are moving towards a command economic model, a restricted economic model, which stifles international trade and we are somewhat moving towards an economy that is akin to North Korea, a failed state, a failed economy, a bankrupt economy. This administration is striving to disengage themselves from international activity. Kindly focus your attention to the statement of the EU countries. They are alarmed. When the EU countries are alarmed, we as a responsible opposition too are alarmed because the EU countries are a vital export destination for Sri Lankan exports. The EU is talking about a one-way street attitude of the Sri Lankan government. If, if the EU countries decide 
that they reject the import restriction policy that the Sri Lankan government is embarking upon. Has the government given some thought to the detrimental impact on Sri Lankan exporters? Has the government given an iota of attention for the loss of EU market? How it's going to impact on domestic employment? I think the government has not. Mr. Speaker, the international ratings are an important indicator of gauging international confidence in our economy. How the international society perceives the present status of our economy. That has a direct bearing on investment inflows, foreign direct investment. It has a direct bearing on businesses who are proposing to set up businesses in our country. Mr. Speaker, I ask you, where the whole of international society is looking at Fitch ratings, Moody's rating, Standard and Poor, and so on and so forth. We are the only country that is rejecting these international ratings. I would like to ask members of the government, is there a domestic rating system that is going to encourage and induce foreign investors to come to Sri Lanka? Does the government possess some magic wand which they can exhibit which would attract foreign investors to come, in, come and set up in Sri Lanka and promote employment. standard and poor Moody Come on. It's a ridiculous argument that is proposed by the so-called economic guru of the present administration who happens to represent the parliament on the national list. And Mr. Speaker, in his, in his reply to my 27-2 question, he was talking of post-COVID as if COVID had dissipated or disappeared from our society. Mr. Speaker, we are going through the second wave of COVID-19. And the State Minister of Finance, doesn't he realize that? Isn't he in touch with the grassroots of our country? Is he detached from reality in our country? He's mentioning in this August Assembly that we are in a post-COVID situation. We are not. We are in the midst of a second wave. But the state minister has failed even to realize that. So a person who is in cloud cuckoo land, who is in dreamland, engages and comes to this august assembly to explain the government's financial and economic policy. Mr. Speaker, I pity your government. That's what I have to say. These people, they are deciding on government economic policy while being languishing in the clouds, while being in seventh heaven. They do not realize the present situation. I will tell you, Mr. Speaker, what the government is engaging on. It is engaging on what once President Bush spoke of Reaganomics. They are engaging in voodoo economics. They are engaging in crony capitalism. They are propagating lies and untruths and deception to mislead the people. The present administration is hostage to super-rich <coughs> business interests and business oligarchical interests. So I want to basically state the fact that the state minister uses his natural suave to deceive the people of our country, going to the extent of deceiving those 
who report business within this August Assembly. So I can tell you, yes, Honorable Cabral did give us a lesson, but the lesson was confined to deception, lies, untruths, and he gave a super defense of crony capitalism and oligarchic, hegemonic, econ economic policy that this government is implementing. And they're trying to hide behind their ineptness. This government is totally incompetent. Honorable Leader of the Opposition, during your speech, I think it is by mistake that you have mentioned that a country as a failed state so let me permit me to uh, expand that part of your from your speech because that had nothing to do with us, I think. Yes, leader of the question. I never mentioned failed state. Yes. No, I never mentioned. It's not in my notes. I never mentioned what I said was a failed, incompetent, inept government, yeah, not yeah. the state. Anyway, anyway, I don't know whether I have... No, I have, I have said... No. So if it, if it had been... No, 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 it had not been off. It's own. It's own. It's own. No, no, it's own. 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 But you can, you can... No, I have not. Yeah. I'm sorry. But anyway, if it is so, I will get it. No, I have not uttered if it the is word not, failed no, state. No problem. I'm insisting. Right. I know my English, please. Respect no. my linguistic skills. No, no, it's okay. I never you, I, mentioned... I, I have no question about I have that. never mentioned failed state. <laughs> failed state, failed government. Please understand the distinction. No. If it had Rajaya. been stated so, we'll get it explained. <laughs> this is this is this is ludicrous. I mean, no. I'm sorry. No, I, it's okay. I, I never yes. mentioned the word failed state. Yeah. You're totally yeah. wrong. Yes. Yeah, no, I know. To waste Go into time that. Yes. Yeah, we, we, we'll see and, that. And, and basically, sorry.